Putin's power move is an answer to Xi Jinping, as Russia prepares for a rising Chinese threat. And the reasons for this quiet rivalry are many. Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin are fighting a battle of constitutional alterations. First, Xi Jinping became the leader of China for his entire life with an amendment in the constitution in 2018. Now, Vladimir Putin has also prepared to stay in power for life. Earlier this month, Russia allowed constitutional reforms that allow Putin to stay in power until 2036. Putin's decision to stay in power is being read as a reaction to Xi Jinping's lifetime takeover of the People's Republic of China. There are a number of reasons that dictate Putin's decision to stay in power and counter Chinese hegemony. But the main ones are growing Chinese influence in Central Asia, Sino-Russian border disputes, Russian insecurities in its Far East, future competition in the Arctic, and Moscow's role in the Indo-Pacific. Let us first look at China in Russia's backyard, that is Central Asia. Central Asia and parts of Eastern Europe have traditionally been Russia's sphere of influence. But China is now overpowering it in its own backyard. China has emerged as the biggest trading partner of Central Asia, leaving behind the EU and Russia. Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan already owe a bulk of their foreign debt to China. Russia's closest ally in this part of the world, Kazakhstan, itself receives more investments from China than from Russia. Eurasia is at the core of Putin and the Kremlin's foreign policy, but Beijing is continuously trying to replace it as the key player. The Border Disputes Putin is aware of China's extraordinary economic rise and its ambitions to gain more and more territory from all its neighbours. China shares the second longest border with Russia, next only to Mongolia. China can rake up border issues especially when the leadership in Russia is taken over by a weak successor to Putin. Chinese officials have already tried to stake a claim on the Russian city of Vladivostok. This is how China claims territories. First, it starts bringing up ancient or medieval era claims, then Beijing disputes settled borders, and finally, the People's Liberation Army troops start engaging in scuffles and face-offs. China in the Russian Far East This sparsely populated Russian territory boasts of abundant natural resources, and Russia traditionally looks at it as vulnerable to Chinese influence or even colonization. China has been investing heavily in the far eastern region of Russia, and Vladimir Putin wants to counter this dependence on China. This was also the writing on the wall when India extended $1 billion line of credit to Russia for development of the Far East region. The Arctic Tussle Russia's ambitions look the most promising in the Arctic. The speed of global warming and the melting of polar ice caps means that we could witness rampant commercial shipping in this part of the world earlier than expected. Russia feels that this will boost its geoeconomic influence. Moscow claims that the Arctic is its privileged sphere of interest. And it is important for Russia since it wants to become a supreme naval power. Geography has been to Russia's disadvantage after the downfall of the USSR. It currently has only one warm water naval base, Sevastopol, which is also the reason why Moscow annexed Crimea in the first place. But Chinese views are divergent. It does not agree with Moscow's idea that the Arctic is a part of Russian coastal waters. China claims that it is a part of the global commons, much like Antarctica. Russian officials already detest the Chinese ambitions of a northern sea route, the Polar Silk Road. Beijing would want this route to fall within the BRI in the distant future and use this route for trading in order to avoid becoming a green water navy due to the Malacca Dilemma. Far from boosting its geoeconomic and naval strength, Russia will be left fighting for sovereignty over the new commercial shipping lanes. Russia is getting sucked into the Indo-Pacific Moscow claims that the Indo-Pacific is an artificial concept that is divisive and aims to contain China. Kremlin might refuse to officially agree that the Indo-Pacific is the next big thing on the global horizon, but it is getting sucked into the region itself. 
The Indo-Pacific region is broad and there is a lot of common ground to be explored. Russia might already be entering the region with the plans of a Chennai-Vladivostok sea route. For India, this is an opportunity to expand its presence in the region and for Russia, this is an opportunity to bring global powers into a region that could become vulnerable to Chinese expansionism. Russia is already assisting the modernization of the navies of Vietnam, Indonesia and India. Hence, it is already playing a role in the Indo-Pacific. This is ultimately going to irk China, which is the target of the Indo-Pacific strategy. Putin understands that things are going to go downhill with China sooner or later. Sino-Russian relation is that of competition and convenience rather than cooperation and friendship. Putin is here to stay as he tries to give direction to his country in this changing world order.